Peace and welcome. Today we have another top 10, our favorite Manami Matsumai themes. She has been composing for quite a long time and she covers many different genres. All around, she's one of the greats. So let's talk about some of our favorite tunes that she has made. First, we have Carrier Air Wing, the Mission 8 theme. There's a real Capcom feel to this theme, but it is a CPS-1 game, so it has that Capcom sound chip and the vintage sound that goes along with it. really enjoy the melody, it has an 80s feel and I usually can get behind that. This is basically a full-fledged theme. It's not just a simple loop that's repeated until the end. It has a full-on intro, breakdown, bridge, and basically everything you want in a completed song. She definitely put in some work on this one. And at number 9 we have Daffy Duck, the Marvin missions on the Game Boy, the boss theme. The overall feel of the theme makes for good background music during a boss fight. I can also see this playing during an action-packed stage. Maybe something like Contra. I feel this theme represents the Game Boy well. There's just something about the Game Boy sound chip that I really like. It has a clean sound considering it's on a handheld system, and handhelds aren't known for having the most storage allocated for music. Sometimes the audio is just atrocious. And I'm looking at you, Game Boy Advance. Number 8 entry comes from the boss theme on Batman. So we have back to back boss themes from the Game Boy, and a lot like our previous entry, this has that clean Game Boy sound. Manami Matsumai knows exactly what to do when it comes to that Game Boy sound chip. In my opinion, it's an easy listen. When a theme is done well on the Game Boy, the final product will have a smooth feel, with not a lot of artifacts. It's almost the complete opposite of the Game Boy Advance, which suffers from audio compression issues. Some of the themes on it are completely ruined, although there is still some really good music. Lucky number 7 is from Shovel Knight, titled A Thousand Leagues Below, Iron Whale. Released in 2014, this is the newest game on our list so far. The soundtrack has a chiptune feel and it's a nice throwback. I like when companies take this route and give the theme and the tunes a retro feel. may have a chiptune feel, but she wasn't limited by hardware. 
For example, the Super Nintendo was limited to 8 channels of audio while she was free to use any number of channels she wanted. Just hand in a mix down when you're all finished and the devs can put that into the game. Life as a composer is definitely easier with no hardware limitations. Number 6 spot is held by Mega Man 10, Nitro Rider. This theme can be heard on the Nitro Man stage in the 2010 Mega Man game. One thing I like about it is the fact that they went for more of a retro feel, kind of like Shovel Knight for example. Chiptune throwback. They could have easily used Red Book Audio. In 2010, storage wasn't a concern. This theme has a nice groove and it fits an action game well. Usually, I can picture most themes playing in a few different games, but this one screams Mega Man. It definitely reminds me of some classic Blue Bomber. Number 5. Dragon Quest Swords. Go for Broke. A game that wasn't well received when it first came out. We'll just say it's not the best Dragon Quest game, although the music is still top tier. This theme kind of reminds me of some 70s or 80s television show intros, maybe Magnum P.I. or something like that. The melodies are completely different, but it's just the overall feel of the theme. It has good upbeat energy, and I think it would work in a wide variety of games. It's just too bad the game itself wasn't as good as the soundtrack. Lucky number four is from Mighty Number no. Nine, Beyond the Watery Vortex. A fitting theme for our unlucky number four spot. The game bombed, but it did have some decent music. This is a far too common event, and you can't blame the composer. They just did the music. You got a feel for the composers in this situation. They put in all this work, they might even think it's some of their best work to date. But then the rest of the game is so bad that nobody bothers to really play. And some others may have skipped the game altogether after seeing bad review after bad review. But as we all well know, a bad game can still have good music. Our bronze position today may be a surprise to some, but I think not too much of a surprise to the people who follow the channel. From Mega Man, here is the Elect Man theme. From the 1987 NES game, this theme is not only a classic, but it's quite memorable. I might say her most memorable theme of all. So this may just be nostalgia and the fact we have a personal connection to the Elect Man riff, 
as it was the inspiration for the first Oddly Familiar episode. But overall, this is a catchy theme, and catchy enough that hundreds of people wanted to use that exact same melody. Just go watch this video right here. Our Silver Position is not the most popular game on our list today, but the music is still top tier. From the game Flat Kingdom, here is the Mysterious Ocean. I really enjoy this theme. I think there are many different games this music would fit in. It has a bit of a somber feel, and then combine that with its slow tempo, and you have a good theme for many different scenarios. For example, in Final Fantasy VI, this would be a good fit for the day after. In Final Fantasy VII, this theme might be a good fit for after the death of a certain character which I won't mention. The theme itself isn't very convoluted, it has just a few instruments and they blend together well. And before we get to number one, we have a few honorable mentions. Gold position today comes from Area 88, in the US known as UN Squadron. The Stage 2 theme titled Thundercloud. First released in 1989 by Capcom for the CPS arcade hardware, and it has that distinct Capcom sound. This theme appears on stage 2 of the Japanese arcade game and we give credit to it because it's the original. However, the arranged version is what really takes it to the next level. And this is one of the rare instances where the composer did the original as well as the arranged version. You can find it on the Area 88 soundtrack, just listen to track number 27. And if you find it for a good price, you might want to pick it up. So there you have our favorite Manami Matsumae themes. Personally, I would put her in my top 10 favorite composers. I haven't thought too much about the order yet, that's a top 10 for another time. Our next top 10 will be our top 10 favorite themes by Motohiro Kawashima. You might know of his work on Streets of Rage 2, 3, and 4. He doesn't have as many games on his resume as some other composers, but his work speaks for itself. And of course, last but not least, shout out to Gold Level patrons Bear Sona and Quantum X. I am ICC. Thanks for watching. Peace.